and basically see we are looking for a data where data warehouse redshift uh, database training okay uh, particularly uh, redshift database okay so have you gone through this content which has forwarded to you Hello. Yeah. Yes. Our brand and area says we have we have gone through the content. Okay. So you are so looks, uh, Yes. Yes. Looks like good. Ah. Uh, and uh, just one more thing. Uh, uh, we are from Oracle database ba background. So uh, we would be mig migrating Oracle databases to uh, uh, Amazon Redshift. So it would be helpful if that uh, part would also be covered here. Okay. Okay. Sure. See, uh, I will. I'll try to help you out as much as uh, you know in terms of uh, all the details. Uh, okay. Okay. Because we are doing this training for multiple corporates, and uh, Redshift is something which comes for project-driven training. Okay. So I'm sure. Uh, so you know. So let me see if. Uh, okay. Yeah. Trainer has joined the call. Okay. Yeah, uh, I think Vivek has joined the call. And uh, if Vivek, our trainer, Redshift trainer, has joined the call, are you there, Vivek? Uh, yes, I'm there. Okay. And uh, so, Hello? participants, yeah, this is Aman. And yes, uh, Vivek, I am along with the two people, two persons from Indira Micro team. And uh, one is Mr. Brandon and okay. another is Mr. Vishal. Okay. And uh, we are here to have a discussion on Redshift training, which you we are expecting from you to provide uh, okay. to Brandon and Vishal, Mr. Vishal, right? And uh, this is the content which you have shared with me earlier. The same content I forwarded to uh, Brandon and Mr. Vishal. And uh, they are saying they are from Oracle background and uh, they want to know more on data warehouse uh, for the same okay. data warehouse technology. And uh, they are okay with the content. Brandon and Vishal, you are okay with the content, right? Hello? Yeah, uh, yes. Yes, we are okay with, uh, but as uh, Brandon said earlier, uh, we are from Oracle database background and in future we are planning to migrate our Oracle databases on Redshift, uh, Amazon Redshift. So in that way, we are looking for training, how to manage administration, uh, recovery, backup, whatever it's a part of. Okay. So, so Vivek, uh, you take a lead, have a discussion. Vivek, I uh, take a lead, have a discussion uh, with uh, Brandon and Vishal. Okay. And uh, let them know like how we are taking this training for 32 hours of training, uh, which going to be divided. Okay. As per the yeah, Vivek will be discussing with you, Brandon and Vishal. Okay, thanks, Aman. Yeah. So hello everyone, we will decide. So <clears throat> in this uh, training, we will be, uh, the content is in front of you. So we will be going through AWS stack and we will be visiting AWS S3 and uh, AWS Redshift. And uh, we will start with, as you have the content in front of you. So we will be starting with <clears throat> uh, the Redshift architecture, how the data warehouses uh, in the cloud works and what are the general best practices are and what are the do's and don'ts that we do while doing data warehousing on cloud. So uh, <clears throat> we will go through uh, even the admin part, like you mentioned, the data recovery and the backups are there and you are uh, migrating Oracle to uh, AWS Redshift. So we will try to make our training as focused on to that direction so that we get maximum from it. And uh, the contents, what I mentioned in our <clears throat> uh, sheet, we will be following closely. 
do that and if any other topic you want me to focus more like you said data warehousing you want to understand or uh, from that perspective you want to understand so we can focus on uh, data warehousing topics even if required like how a data model is made in uh, AWS Redshift we can even discuss, discuss have a discussion on those topics and <clears throat> Uh, I hope the con course content course is open in front of you. Yes, we like. <clears throat> so yes, basically, uh, yeah. So basically, we will start with the Redshift architecture. We will even discuss how it's a bit different from uh, the other data warehouses that are available in market. And what extra Amazon did with the AWS Redshift that it went to that level. So you can see there are a cluster, leader node, compute node, node slices, columnar storage. So there are different terminologies in Redshift architecture. We will try to combine it with like Oracle, how it works. So we can have a close by comparison and we can go on. Like how Redshift is there and how any other uh, serial databases are there, like Oracle or MySQL or MSQL. So we will keep that comparison in parallel. So whenever our session goes, there is something that we can always compare to, like how what was happening to a, a normal database and how it works in Amazon Redshift case. And uh, <clears throat> apart from that, we will try to launch an example cluster. So basically, a trial account is offered by Amazon. The 30 days trial, we can go and we can. Uh, play with it like uh, the clusters are there we can launch our cluster we can configure the nodes we can make our database up and running so those parts will go through the uh, <clears throat> amazon redshift hands-on apart from that even we will try connecting one sql client to our amazon cluster and start querying the data so so which all becomes to our hands-on exercises and uh, even we will work on performance tuning, like well, what we do for the longer running queries, or even if we have some data loads managed in production system that works in uh, schedule based hours or trigger based hours. So we will even have a look on how we handle these kind of data loads to our data warehousing. <clears throat> even the cluster performance, how we maintain it, like if we are handling some admin part of the Amazon Redshift. So how we can uh, configure some alerts, like if the cluster is performing bad or if the health is not good, we can get a time, timely alerts, like before getting into some problem, we can fix it and make our cluster up and running. So even those points we will be touching on, like the cluster performance and all, which will be in our day one module uh, content you can see there. Uh, after the, uh, you, Guys are able to. Have, I am just going through the content. If you want, I can share my screen too. Yeah, the same one. What is shared on the screen? Then I am going through the same. The same one. Course content, correct? Yes, yes, yes. Yes, so yes. We are we are able to see it. Yes. So basically, I have moved down to day two content. <clears throat> okay. So. Uh, what what we are content. seeing? Yes, yes, yes. Day yes. two. Yes. Yes. Okay. So basically in day two, uh, now we will come deeply into Redshift. So how the Redshift tables are designed. Uh, and apart from in Redshift tables, like there are two, three key concepts that actually only applies to uh, AWS Redshift tables, like the data distribution of tables or data sorting of the tables and the data encodings of the tables. So this all helps us in better performance of Redshift and it gives us a columnar uh, capability. We will discuss these all topics in more detail when we come into these sessions. So <clears throat> these all is uh, all together explains the Redshift architecture, like what all extra we need to do when we are in Redshift as uh, compared to any other databases. So we need to apply the columnar compression, we need to apply the distribution key, we need to apply the sort key. So these are conceptual topics which needs to be applied when we design our tables in Redshift. So once that is done, <clears throat> we can come back to uh, loading data. Now, there are two things that I told you in the beginning, like we will be discussing on Amazon S3 and Amazon Redshift together. So if I explain on an AWS perspective, AWS has made Amazon S3 as a data lake where we actually keep our data there. So whatever data we have got from any kind of system, 
like either from FTP we are getting, from cloud we are getting, from Google uh, <clears throat> websites we are getting, or even unstructured data we are getting, we can just dump the data in Amazon S3 and keep it as a data lake. And whatever data we want to transform it or use it for our further reporting or analytics, or even for data science algorithms, we can transform and move that data. We move that data to from Amazon S3 to Amazon Redshift. So this is that the loading data part from when we move our data from S3 to Redshift. So we will do a couple of hands-on exercises there, like how we load the text files to our uh, Amazon Redshift table, or how we load the CSVs to our Amazon Redshift table, or even from one table we are trying to copy data to another Redshift table. So how does we do that? So basically, we will be going through even those concepts uh, while going through this topic that is loading data deep dive and hands on. If you can scroll down now. So basically, in that loading section, it's showing multiple kind of files that we can load into our website. Yes. So apart from that. That is normal. We will be going through any DNL operation like insert, select, update, and delete. And uh, <clears throat> even with a couple of uh, troubleshooting techniques. And apart from that, unloading of data is one important key feature which is given in Redshift. Like uh, if entire table we want to export and send it to a client, like he needs to just see the entire table. Or even there is a SQL query written. And uh, that query is enough to give him a report that client or a business is needing. So we can just run that SQL query and uh, we can generate one text file from that query itself and give it back to the client. So no intermediate layer is required like in generally we, how we, in our cases we will be either connecting to a reporting tool like Tableau or Clipview and then visualizing that data and then giving back to the business. But here we skip that step as Redshift has the alone capability to unload that data back to S3 or any other location and where a client or a business can go back and just have grab that file and we can go on with this for the analysis. So that is an important key feature and loading data. So we will be again focusing on that. <clears throat> so once these two uh, content are over, so on day three we will be going with the performance gaming techniques. So in general, like how performance gaming we are do in Oracle DB or we do in MSQL or MySQL. So similar kind of uh, steps are there in the case of Amazon Redshift. So there are predefined queries which we can run and we can find it out like which are the tables which are not behaving correctly or which are the reporting queries or any other queries that are actually not going well with our Amazon clusters or Amazon nodes. And we can tune them to get better performance. Uh, so there are uh, basically two, three concepts again there, like vacuuming of your table or analyzing of your table. So we will go this in more detail and on hands-on, like how generally we write a command to uh, <clears throat> performance tune our tables or performance tune our reviews or anything that is uh, behaving unexpected as uh, our configuration. So we will be focusing on that. Apart from that, uh, <clears throat> there are the uh, uh, ways to find the query plans or uh, how we have an explain plan option in case of Oracle. So even the similar kind of uh, option we have in Amazon Redshift. So we can go through that in more detail. And apart from that, one key concept even I saw in uh, performance tuning is workload management. So basically, I can tell you in uh, more detail, uh, in a higher level detail, like workload management is something like I run a query which takes 30 minutes of time. And there is one more query just, that just takes three seconds of time. So basically, if I have only one-to-one -one mapping, like if I have ran a 30-minute query, and after that I have fired a three-second query. So unless and until that 30-minute query is completed, my three-second query is waiting. So if you see uh, the feasibility and the, in case of a business understanding, ideally that three-second query should have given had got that space to get the result and give it back to the business or the client who is requesting it. And anyways, a 30 minute query is fine to wait for three more seconds. So these kind of tweaking we can do in case of workload management. Like we can make longer running queries to go back. And there is something which has came a very quick query or a count query that just take a count and it's like a seconds of operation. 
So it can we give them space. It can come get to our redshift table. We can back the result, and the longer running query can resume that. So this is called a workload management on a higher level. There is much more in workload management. So we can again discuss how workload management we can do that and what is the best practice to do that. And uh, after that, even like uh, your existing BI system, you told about like you are migrating from Redshift to Oracle BI. Uh, sorry, Oracle BI to Redshift. So even like what all things we take care when we do a migration, or what are the best practice, or what are the things like we should not do. So we can even have a discussion on those topics. <clears throat> and after that, we will be ending with all general best practices of Redshift and do's on don'ts. That we apply on a cloud data warehouse or uh, something like uh, which has a massive parallel processing capabilities and uh, the things that, which is not allowed to do that which makes our system slower in case of redshift and even if we configure it badly there is a case like uh, redshift can perform even slower than any other database so those things what needs to be taken care of and we uh, use redshift to its maximum so after going to on these three days of course content, I think uh, you will be able to be good at it. So any questions on this now? We were Brandon here. Yes. Uh, uh, any any prerequisites uh, required from our end before we join this course? Before we get started? See, prerequisites, I will say like uh, how good you are in SQL, it will be more easy. We, will, we can go Hello. more. Hello. Uh, yes, yes. Am I yes. So I'm saying the prerequisites is uh, basically how good you are in SQL, that fast okay. we can go. And even if we have uh, less knowledge on SQL, like we can focus even on SQL topics more. So basically, I will say like data warehousing and SQL are the prerequisites. Yes, these okay. two are good. So we can really go faster and we can really go in a good speed. Okay. Or any any knowledge like required for cloud? Nothing. That I will take. Nothing? Care. I will okay. Take care. okay. Okay. So primarily uh, data warehousing is more than enough. Trust me. Like uh, it will be very helpful for even my side. And even if it's not there, I can even have a discussion of one, one, two hours on proper data warehousing. And we can even finish that topic if so. so. Okay, okay. That's it on a broader side. Apart from that, any questions, Brandon? Mm, not yet. Uh, Vishal, any any questions from your end? Hello. Uh, I think he's got disconnected. Okay. Aman, you there? I'm there. I'm there. Uh, uh, hi, sir. I'll, I'll give you a call back. I'm on a meeting right now. Okay. Hello. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm there. Please send. Yes. So actually, I walked through uh, Brandon okay. and so Brandon, Vishal about the content. Yeah. So Brandon, uh, yeah, that's all from our side. And uh, okay. I will be. It's up to you. How do you propose to your HR team now? And what are the dates yeah. your HR team can let me know? And I will okay. work with my trainer Vivek. And we can start. Okay. We are good to start. Uh, from, okay. Yeah. Uh, when can we start? I mean, any time is be, good for you. We are okay to start it from today or tomorrow. Not today. Uh, we will already have two or three course. classes. Uh, okay. Today lined up. So by tomorrow okay. or so, we can begin the classes. Okay. 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 Fine. Mm -hmm. uh, I think, will. will get are, back to you on this. Yeah. There are two three formalities that are left from the HR team. Just let them know. Okay. And okay. they will call, call me and close it. Okay, fine, fine. Yeah. All right, uh, yeah. Mr. Vishal and Mr. Brandon, it was very really nice talking to you. And uh, don't worry at all. Uh, we we're doing this training from last so many years, despite even uh, uh, the Redshift product, which is very popular at one stream and not that popular at the other end. When I say popular, a lot of corporate comes for this training. Not popular, okay. the professionals all always being scared of what is there in Redshift. But mm -hmm. the in corporate, it's very popular product. Okay, okay. Yeah. Okay. Fine. So, so we'll looking take... forward for the training and uh, thanks. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. We'll take much. care of training, study materials okay. and the recording as well of this session. 
and even okay, post training okay. for next 6 month we will be supporting you post training as well any kind okay, of technical that would be great will be there yeah okay 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 thank you all thanks all yes, thanks vivek thank you thank, thank you very much thank, thank you. you vivek yeah yeah